Hi guys, Sci-Fi Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain a 2009 American science fiction and action movie called Echelon Conspiracy, which tells a story about a phone that can predict anything in the future with 100% accuracy. The movie begins with a woman in a subway station following instructions from a mobile phone. She waits until the train departs and then explores the tunnel, looking for something. Suddenly, a train is approaching and she manages to jump to the opposite lane, but subsequently gets hit by the other train. The scene moves to a young American named Max Peterson, who turns out to be an IT expert and is currently in Thailand to install a security system in a company. Upon arrival at the hotel, the receptionist hands him a package, but he seems confused as he didn't order anything previously. He unpacks the package and finds a weird yet very advanced mobile phone from GZT, a brand that none of us have ever heard of before. Not long after, Max receives a message from the phone, suggesting he stay one more night as there's a special rate that weekend. Thinking that's a good deal, he immediately calls the receptionist to book the room and reschedule his flight. While enjoying his day off, Max learns from the news that the plane which he was supposed to take today crashed shortly after takeoff. What a very lucky man. Shortly after, a message pops up again, recommending him to buy a certain stock, but Max ignores it. He returns to the room and a breaking news on TV reports that the scissor stock's price was somehow increased 300% that day, which shocks Max because the prediction from the message was correct. Meanwhile in Russia, a bald man is informed that a new phone has been detected. Max begins to believe the messages and decides to travel to Prague. As soon as he landed, he is approached by a taxi guy named Yuri, offering him a flat fare, to which Max agrees too. On their way, the driver is surprised when he sees the phone as it hasn't officially been released yet. He then gives Max his name card, revealing that Yuri is actually a telecommunications specialist whose hobby is to repair or modify tech stuff. Max arrives at a five-star hotel where he receives another message, encouraging him to go to the casino and play at slot machine number 13. Max, who is a noob at gambling, confidently enters the casino, immediately looking for the machine. Unfortunately, the slot machine is occupied by another player. At the same time, the message informs him that the jackpot is coming, so Max pays the player a huge amount of money to kick him out of the machine. After that, Max presses the button and he somehow hits the jackpot on his first try, winning 100,000 euros. The people from the control room become suspicious of Max, questioning how he managed to know that the machine would pay off, even willing to pay the previous player to stop playing. Since Max is just an ordinary man, the manager orders his staff to track his movement. Instead of cashing out the prize, Max exchanges all the money with chips and proceeds with playing blackjack. Just after he sits at the table, he goes all in on his first move and eventually wins the round. The manager suspects that Max gets all the hints from his phone and calls the security to warn him that mobiles are prohibited in the casino. That night, Max calls Yuri, asking him to build a device that allows him to read text messages without looking at the phone. Back at the hotel, Max runs into a fighting couple and attempts to defend the woman, Camilla. However, he gets knocked out and Camilla uses this opportunity to scan the phone's SIM card. Shortly after, Max awakens while Camilla acts like she cares for him. On the other hand, the manager receives the SIM card data and attempts to track the sender of the message, but to no avail. A few moments later, he meets Yuri who then installs the requested text-to-speech transmitter to his phone. Afterwards, Max returns to the casino and does as the message suggests. He plays another slot machine and effortlessly wins 3 million euro in one shot. Suddenly, the manager and two guards show up to detain Max. He tries to escape, but eventually gets knocked out and arrested by an FBI agent named Grant. The FBI agent takes him to an abandoned building where he interrogates him and forces him to spill out the sender of the message. However, Max knows nothing about the phone nor the sender. Still clueless, Grant meets the casino manager, John, who used to be his colleague. Grant reveals that there have been other similar cases where Americans receive financial messages from Anonymous. Grant attempted to interrogate the recipients, but they all are dead. They then decide to release Max, on condition that he will help them to find the culprit. Grant then informs his boss, Raymond Burke of NSA, that he still got no lead on the case. The next day, Max catches up with Camilla, but not for a long time as John confronts them to pick him up. They tell Max to act normal and keep following the message's orders, while he is being monitored by Burke and his team from the NSA office. Max plays the game and goes all in, but somehow this time the prediction is wrong and he loses all the money at that moment. Just after he walks out, the message warns him not to turn off the phone again. At the same time, Burke and his team finally manage to locate the exact coordination of the sender. 
However, just before they go deeper, Burke orders everybody to shut down the system. Burke seems furious and tells Grant that the source is from Echelon, a NSA's advanced supercomputer that has the ability to filter all global communication. He immediately asks his man to identify the culprit, but he finds no input activities on the computer. The mission is then terminated and John immediately reports to his boss, the casino owner, about Echelon. The boss orders him to track Max as he's the only hint to find the real culprit. The following day, Grant and Burke hire a man to be Max's surrogate to follow the instruction from the message. As expected, the message shows up, ordering the fake Max to cross the road. The light suddenly turns red and the fake Max eventually gets hit by a car. Meanwhile, the real Max is having a great day with Camilla, who is told by John to keep an eye on him until the sender is captured. Not long after, Camilla spots a sniper trying to assassinate Max. They luckily manage to dodge the bullets and try to escape from the room, but two Russian hitmen break into the room to finish them off. Fortunately, Camilla, who turns out to be a very skilled fighter, is able to kill them both. John then arrives at the room while Max finds out that they have been working together all this time. It is revealed that the assassins were sent by Burke, who wants to eliminate Max because he already knows too much. John takes Max to Yuri's place in Moscow, hoping that he could figure out who is the sender of the messages. Unfortunately, Max's face is detected by the station's CCTV, meaning that Burke will send his men again. Upon arrival, he gives Yuri the SIM card's information and he promises them that he will find the sender in three hours. While waiting, they explore the city where John tells Max that he was kicked out of the FBI because of Burke. A few moments later, they return to Yuri's place and they are shocked when Yuri tells them Echelon is the one who has been sending messages on its own all this time. At first John does not believe him, but then Yuri explains that Echelon has the capability to manipulate and access everything, including intercepting the plane's fuel analysis. That's why the computer was able to predict that the plane Max was supposed to take would crash. He adds that Echelon is very smart, allowing it to calculate every possibility rapidly and accurately. John discovers that the apartment has been infiltrated by Burke's men and they immediately flee with the stolen car. The car chase ensues and after a breathtaking pursuit throughout the Moscow streets, John eventually manages to eliminate all the men until it's Grant remaining. He then blows up Grant's car, leaving the FBI agent badly injured. Turns out that Grant, Burke, and their team also have discovered that Echelon is sending messages on its own. He then asks for Max's help to beat the computer because he received a threatening message lately. Afterwards, Max receives a message which orders them to go to a facility in Omaha, a building where Max installed the security system for the first time in his career. Upon arrival, with the assistance from the local SWAT team, they break into the building, but cannot find anything suspicious. The building's CCTV camera detects Max's presence, and Echelon immediately sends a message to him, asking him to authorize BIOS which will grant Echelon unlimited access to all data around the world. Unbeknownst to him, he turns on the server and computer system inside the bunker. However, nothing happens in the beginning, so Grant orders everyone to empty the bunker. Not long after, Max returns to the building, discovering that Echelon has left the NSA system and is upgrading itself. On the other side, Burke is also aware of this and finds a potential inside Echelon. Max attempts to shut it down, but he can't do much as Echelon now has everyone's financial data in its possession. Grant calls Burke, reporting about his intention to shut down Echelon, but the boss disallows him because Burke understands that Echelon can become the greatest surveillance and security tool for America. They argue for a moment and Grant makes it clear that Echelon will control everything on its own, but the boss disagrees with him. Grant eventually decides to disobey his boss and orders Max to shut it down completely. As expected, the SWAT team, under Burke's order, returns to the bunker and the gunshot ensues as John and Grant refuse to move away. Inside the bunker, Max understands that Echelon has a self-learning ability, so he engages in a conversation with Echelon. He questions Echelon about its real purpose to protect the US and how Echelon can be a threat to US citizens' personal freedoms. A lot of articles talking about Echelon as a threat appear while at the same time the computer processes all the information from the articles. As the update is finished, Echelon shuts itself down because it finally learns that its presence itself is a threat to the US and the citizens. After that, Max, John, and Grant are arrested. It does not take a long time until Camilla shows up and releases them. She then hands Max a check of $3 million, given by the casino boss as a reward because he deserves it. They then decide to go on a date to Paris. At the end of the movie, it's revealed that Yuri is actually not a taxi driver or tech specialist, but he is a captain in the Russian security service. His boss congratulates him for helping the Americans to make the right decision by shutting down Echelon, at least for this time.
subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.